Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a complete disassembly of the Invert Mini. Um, I did this video before and I skipped several parts that I guess I didn't reali realize that I did. Um, so we're just going to update the video, go completely restart and do it with this one. So first thing you're going to want to need is obviously the gun. I like to have either a you know, a rag or a towel or something to lay your gun on. If you have a tech mat that works great too and just rubber anything to keep your gun from scratching on the table and then the next thing you're going to do is need to have a set of allen keys uh, preferably the um, ball tipped ones if you don't have a ball tipped one that's fine okay um, it just helps to keep screws from stripping out here I've got an exalt one or if you can use the exact or the uh, allen key set that comes with the gun either way just you need to have a set of allen keys and I believe these are the US or metric. I believe they're the US uh, standard. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and go over the gun here. As you can see, it's the Invert Mini. This is the Storm Edition, or excuse me, a Storm Edition. Basically, just the paint scheme on it or anodizing. The only upgrade to this gun is the Empire Nano Feed Neck. So, everything else is stock besides the Empire Nano Feed Neck. And we won't be taking that off, so it's not really a big deal. But just wanted to state that this is not a stock feed neck and so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and dig right into this. Uh, gonna, first thing we're going to do is remove the back cap and bolt area and assembly. So, And I'm going to try to move through this as quickly as possible. I know a lot of people don't want to just sit through a really boring video. So first thing you're going to want to do is remove the screw down here in the back. And it helps to get the red allen key. And I'll try to do my best to name off which ones these are. Uh, for these screws, you're going to need the 7 Allen key. Or not. I like the 1 8 Allen key. <laughs> Sorry about that. And just simply undo this, and your, your bolt and back cap area might kind of shoot out a little bit, but it should be fine. And. Again, one reason why I say preferred that you have a ball tipped one is because you can end up taking it out really easy and sliding back in without scratching your gun. Um, just a nice little feature. Okay, so we're going to remove that. And then if it doesn't come out automatically, you can basically just wiggle this round, if anything, press inside the breech area and push on the bolt. As you can see here. There we go. And push that out and then pull the rest of the assembly out. If your bolt and stuff gets is still in there, just go ahead and push that out as well. So, you should see it right here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we'll re lube these in a second, but we're just going to go ahead and set the bolt guide and every all the assembly and all that to the side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is remove the other grip screw right here. And again, this is the same Allen key. it up here. If I can get it. Sorry for the delay here. There we go. Um, I don't know how often this gun has been taken apart actually. This is my sister's gun so Sometimes I'm not sure exactly how long it's been since it's been taken apart and some of the screws kind of get locked down a little bit tighter than normal Just from use and settling and stuff. So okay, so now that we've removed those two screws We can now separate the grip frame and foregrip from the body and I'm gonna go ahead and set those screws to the side out of the way and When you do this you want to pull just gently pry up on it and slide it straight out and make sure you've cleared before you come out. These are actually inside the grip, but they slide out whenever you take the body apart. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set this uh, body section aside and get to the part of the grip. There's not much in here, and it's a little bit dirty in here, so we'll have to bear with me on that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is remove the foregrip, which uses you just simply loosen the two set screws right there. And if I am correct here, I believe it is a 564. I believe, excuse me, I believe it is a .05 Allen key, the smallest Allen key in the bunch. 
and it's not. It is the three thirty seconds, or excuse me, the one sixteenth. So, go ahead and basically just have to loosen it one to two turns, or not even a whole turn. Basically, about one turn each. And take the And you can do this out of order, actually. You don't have to do it in the specific order. You can actually take this off while it's attached to the body or whatever. Um, I just choose to do it this way. And then you can simply slide off the foregrip, like so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set that. Basically, if you want to, you can take this apart. Uh, all that's in there is just the board battery, and that's it. So we're not going to do that right now, but go ahead and zoom in a little bit more to show in detail. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is gonna just remove the grips. Um, I believe this is a 564, so I'm not exactly sure on it here. Just the, undo the grips. And one thing I found about the Invert Mini Grips is it can be a pain in the butt to clean. Uh, just with all the ribbing and stuff in the grip itself, it can be a little bit of a pain to, green, to clean. Basically, if you take soap and water and just like a washcloth, you can most generally clean that out, and it'll pretty much get everything out of there. You don't you want to avoid using any cleaning solutions on the rubber because some can actually mess with the rubber itself. So just want to avoid that. Go ahead and flip over the gun and take the rest of the grip off here. And emotionally, that helps cleaning. But if you've got a better idea, that's fine. You don't have to take all my device. I'm just going to remove the screw from the grip. Okay. And go ahead and finish taking this off. I want to apologize for the video length. Uh, the only way I could figure out how to shorten the video itself is by loosening all the screws individually. And most generally when you do that, it makes it look extremely easy. Um, and also gives you a false sense, you know, I can take that apart on the field. Well, you can't. Um, it's a pain if you have to take the gun completely apart. But it, this video does show what you do, so. Okay, so we got our grips removed. And then the last thing we're going to remove here is the actual ASA. If you're not having problems with this, I do not recommend moving, removing it, okay? Uh, it's just a kind of a, I guess you could say, if you, you know, you, you blow, there is an O-ring in here, in the top here, and I'll show you that. If you've blown that, then you definitely remove it and replace it. But if you're not having any leaking issues or anything out of the ASA, definitely do not recommend removing it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and show it here just in case you're having problems. Uh, first thing you're going to do is loosen these two set screws here. This is not a set screw. That is actually the hole the grip screw goes into right there. So these two right there, and just go ahead and take those out. And they will be tight and they, you want them to be tight um, just so your ASA isn't wobbling around but for now we're going to go ahead and back them out so we can pretty much, you don't have to take them completely out but you have to take them out fairly uh, far just because otherwise it won't allow the ASA to slide off okay so once you've done that then you can simply pull the ASA down and out and like I said if the o-ring is on here it'll be on that little uh, nozzle there or it will be inside here and as you can see this thing is a mess <laughs> um, but as you can see the little o-ring this actually slides out here as you can see it's like a kind of like a rail at attachment but we're gonna go ahead and clean this out off camera but that little o-ring right there is what you don't want to lose Okay, so that's basically everything. Um, if you want to, you can unscrew the feed tube, but we're not going to for now. So I think that's everything for the trigger frame. If you would like to remove the trigger itself, you have to get a hammer and a, if you have like a hole punch, not a, not a paper hole punch, but a leather hole punch or something, just something you can tap this out with. You want to make sure you do not scratch your gun up when doing it. You want to make sure you have a firm grip on it and just lightly tap out the pin. Um, and you, there is one side that you have to do it out of. I believe it is this side. Yes, it is the right side. So when you lay your gun down, 
the right side needs to be up and you can tap that out. We're not going to do that because that's another video, but that's how you take the trigger out. Okay, so I think that's everything for this section. So we're going to go ahead and set these to the side and get to the part, the actual body itself. Now, as you can see here, it is actually empty on the inside. Go ahead and move the camera up just a tad bit. So it's completely hollow on the inside. We took out the internals. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually unplug the solenoid. So if you can see the board in there, you're just going to simply grab this, not by the wires, but the little tube, the plastic piece, and pull the solenoid wire out like that. And then your solenoid actually unscrews. Um, it just screws into the main body, so you can just remove that. Again, uh, you're going to want to make sure this O-ring is in... If my camera will focus... One second here. And there we go. That slight O ring right there. You want to make sure that does that it is not damaged or anything. If it's damaged, you will need to replace it. So there's the solenoid. Go ahead and set that to the side. You don't have to take this off. Uh, you can if you want. It's just a simple unscrew. But to avoid leaks, if it's not leaking there, I don't recommend taking it off at all. So the next thing you want to do is remove the five screws, or excuse me, the, um, well, it looks like there's two, four, six of them here. The small screws here. And some of these can be fairly tight if you have not loosened them already. Uh, if you've not taken the gun apart, I should say. So, just want to go ahead and remove all of those. The screws pretty much are not universal as far as you know, your grip frame screws aren't going to be used anyplace else. So if you have a parts kit, you know, it's very easy to figure out which screw goes where. Um, you're not going to find the grip grip frame that holds the grip frame on anywhere else in the gun besides there. These screws are not used anywhere else besides on the transfer plate. And I'll show you the transfer plate once we remove it. Um, so it's basically, you know, you don't have to worry about different size screws. Basically all of them match up to whatever section of the gun they go to. Okay, so. And some of these can be a, lot, a little bit tight, um, like I said before. With those, you can use the other end, but you want to make sure to be solid with them so you don't end up stripping them out. Um, this one here is being a little bit of a brat. There we go. And basically, you just want to use force with these not necessarily a twisting force, but if you're having a hard time getting one out, it's like starting to strip out or anything, you want to make sure you apply lots of pressure into the, the bolt itself or the screw, and then push and turn. Instead of just keeping on uh, slipping and stuff like that, that'll just strip out your screw even more. Okay, so I got two more here. Like I said, this is a rather long process to get to all the internals of the gun. Uh, if you're just doing a general maintenance, I would not recommend doing this. Uh, go check out my other video on the general maintenance for the Invert Mini. This is just a complete disassembly of the en entire gun. So, you don't feel like you have to do this every time. However, if you are trying to clean the eyes, like I've had a lot of people ask, you will have to basically take off the body, you don't have to take off the reg and such, but you will have to take off the um, body itself from the trigger frame and go through the steps from here on. So, Okay, so now that we've got those removed, you're just going to simply lift up on the transfer plate, and this, this is the transfer plate here. Now, if you want to make sure um, there is a groove in here, as you can see, the groove aligns with the other section here, and I'll show that up close. You want to make sure that you want all this kind of like a just a residue kind of stuff. You just want to wipe that off. Um, if you have like a clean towel around, or not necessarily a clean one, but just to wipe off any excess paint if you've chopped any or anything like that. Definitely uh, don't want all that stuff in there, but that's basically the transfer plate. So, that's what those screws go into. Okay, Base, so from here, you can remove the eye, the eye board. As many of you have been asking how, basically once you've removed the transfer plate here, you simply 
pull up from the connectors on the eyes and there are your eyes and eye board as you can see if you need to just clean these off you know with your rag or whatever you're using be careful not to bend them they will bend as you can see they're just a simple wire that connects them to the board so don't bend them out of shape or anything like that otherwise you will have to buy new eyes and that is not good okay so after you've removed that you want to make sure that your transfer plate is still here or excuse me your transfer um, seal my camera will focus as you can see that like large o-ring I guess you could say um, you want to make sure that's lubed up and you don't want to excess lube at all but you do want it to be there so that the air can get through but like I said no access lube otherwise you'll have problems just a simple coating just over the top and stuff so it's not uh, so it's able to seal as it should and that is all the parts to the Indirect Mini so that's basically the complete disassembly oh the one thing we can do still uh, real fast is remove the detents which are right here and again these haven't been removed so they're gonna be kinda tight at first as you can see there are the detents and go ahead and remove them from this side as well Okay, and there are the details. So that's the been the complete disassembly. If you have any questions, please let me know. Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing the complete reassembly of the Invert Mini. So I'll get all my parts back here up here on the screen. Uh, we're going to basically just be putting all the parts back together from the disassembly and go through all the steps that it takes to do so. Okay, so. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on what we're going to work on first, which is going to be the body and uh, section of the gun first, just to get that done. So, first thing we're going to do is simply kind of go backwards, take our detents and put them back into the gun and screw them in. Helps to get the right Allen key and make sure all these are clean already cleaned up the gun from the last time I played so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the if you got like paint or grease or anything or not grease but the oil or whatever from the paint on your detents just clean those out and you don't have to do it but it helps to keep your gun in top running shape okay so the next thing we're gonna do is flip over the body and install our eye board again and the eye board goes in with the black connector towards the front of the gun and the white solenoid connector at the back and the eyes simply align up with the slots as you can see there they just simply slide down into that and go push right in and they pretty much stay there the next thing we're going to do is make sure that our uh, transfer plate is still in here the rubber kind of style um, as you could say, you know, the connector between the gun that seals the gun's internals right here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take the transfer plate itself and put it on. Uh, what you're going to want to look here is the kind of rounded off portion goes towards the front of the gun. And the tube portion is in the back. And simply set that down on top and it'll line up. Then you're going to want to take and reinstall all your little screws into the transfer plate. So, see how fast I can do this here. You want to make sure they're snug, but you don't have to over tighten them to where they're at the point of stripping out. And one thing, one little thing that most um, mechanics will have you do is when you're putting in, say, something flat like this, you want to go from side to side when installing the screws. And you don't want to completely tighten them down. You just want to snug them, and then we'll go back through the screws later and tighten them down. But basically, you just snug the screws down from side to side. So, go to this side again here. And if I could hold on to my Allen keys. And just kind of snug that down a little bit. Then go back to this side. And then once you get, you know, your outsides done, go ahead and turn toward the inner, inner sections of them here. And I'm trying to do this as fast as possible, but fingers don't work the best
And like I stated in the last video, you don't want to do this um, every time. This is basically just if you have any problems with your gun, you can take it down to whatever parts you need to get to. And one thing I did want to state is if you're having a problem with, say, the ASA, you don't need to take off the body and all that stuff, you know, like the top section of the gun. And I'll point that out towards the, once we get down to the end. Uh, you don't want to take all that apart. You can just simply take the grip frame off and get to it. Or if you're having a problem with your solenoid, you don't need to take the, the uh, regulator or the ASA off. Okay, that's not necessary. I just wanted to show the complete um, re you know, the complete disassembly and reassembly, so you don't have to take all those apart just to get to one piece. You just gotta take apart what you, um, whatever part it needs necessary, if that made any sense at all. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install the solenoid. Uh, let me clean up something right here real fast that I missed. Off camera. Just get a little bit of lube, excess lube off of there, okay. So next we're gonna take our solenoid and simply screw it into the slot, as you can see right there. Make sure not to cross thread it or anything like that. You have to take the wire up above. And you just want to snug it down with your fingers. You don't want to you know, use a wrench or anything on it. And then go ahead and plug the solenoid wire back into the board itself. The eye sensor board. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and set this to the side. I'm not going to mess with it for now and go ahead and go back to our trigger frame here and go ahead and reinstall the ASA to begin with after you missed a couple of things when cleaning uh, the first thing you're going to do again is install the ASA so you're going to take your ASA piece here and your rail and simply slide the rail over and then slide the ASA up the right way here if you have this problem as you can see here with mine it's not fitting perfectly, it's because your transfer tube is screwed in too far, so just um, basically you're only going to have this problem if you take the transfer tube out or unscrew it at all, so basically you just want to unscrew it a little ways and then make sure that there's no gap in between and once you get it firmly pressed up there you want to basically you know use your hand to hold it together and then you're going to want to tighten these um, Allen screws right here back down she can get a hold of it. and you want to tighten these down fairly tight if you feel them starting to give you want to automatically loosen it and I have a video up on how to do that but basically just tighten these down and the whole point of this is to hold the ASA on and to not have any wobble in the ASA okay so, as you can see, I still have quite a bit of wobble, but some of that will be fixed by simply screwing in the transfer tube, and you, that's why some of these, like, I guess you could say grooves are cut in here, so you can grip it and just tighten that down on it. As you can see, I have no more wobble. So, just make sure that's tight. You don't want to over-tighten it again. You just want to make sure it's tight enough to where this isn't wobbling, your ASA isn't wobbling. And mine still is a little bit here, so... And make sure the screws are tightened all the way. Okay, so as you can see, no wobble anymore, and that is fixed. The next thing you're going to do is go ahead and slide your foregrip on by just aligning it with the um, groove cut into the foregrip or where the foregrip slides on. So, foregrip simply just aligns with that and slides forward. Make sure it's pushed all the way down, or you can do this afterwards. You can either do it like this and tighten it up, or we're going to do it a little bit different this time and do it later on in the assembly. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put my grips on, just because the grips can be a little bit of a pain. Some grips go on easy, some grips go on hard. Unfortunately, mine are hard because you have to stretch the grip a little bit for the screws to reach. So it's a little bit easier to do without being completely on the gun itself. So. go on to the next one I like to switch sides just so I can see what I'm doing and go to the other side here and just want to make sure you align the screws and the 
grips along align them with this hole, the one inside of the outside one, if that made sense. I know, I'm sorry if these videos don't make a lot of sense. I know what they mean in my head, and if they don't make sense to you, uh, please let me know, and I can see what I can do about it. I guess I've taken these guns apart so many times, I kind of know what I'm referring to. If you don't, please just ask me, and I'll do my best to explain it. So, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just hurry up here as fast as we can. Do the top screws. got it. Like I said, some grips can actually be a pain in the rear to get in because the they're kind of like almost small so they fit tight and you have to stretch them to be able to fit them on your gun. Okay, so now that we've got that back together, we're going to do a little bit different here and assemble the body with the trigger frame. And to do that, you simply pull down on your trigger, make sure you're holding the trigger back. And your black two on the body needs to align with this kind of cutout right there. So just um, aligns like so. And just make sure everything, the solenoid goes in, you're not pinching any solenoid wires or anything. And push it together like so. And then you're going to go ahead and put the forward grip or the forward grip frame screw in, which is the short one, as you can see here. And I'll show you the next one on the next one what I mean by that. So, go ahead and sorry, I have short Allen keys, so I can't use the a hole they've cut out on the top here, but we will live. And you want to snug this one down fairly tight until you get the other portion of the bolt in. Okay, so that's snug down. Then you're going to want to take your internals here, right here, and simply slide them inside. And you want to align the top pin, oops, there we go, with the hole in the back cap, as you can see hopefully hole right there and you just want to push these internals in and make sure that aligns and sometimes if your spring is a little bit stronger than um, some others you'll have to actually hold it in place otherwise it'll try popping out but you just want to hold it in place and then take your back uh, grip frame screw which is actually the same length except for the little portion on the tip that's been added that is to hold the bolt and bolt assembly in, so the long one goes in the back. And screw that in. Which you can do with your fingers still so far. Now we're going to want to make sure these are tight. Now that we've got this one snug down, just kind of tighten it with the other end. Make sure not to strip, strip the screw, but you want to make sure it's still sturdy and not going to be coming loose, especially during game. And tighten this one down a little bit. Okay. And then the last thing you're going to do is put your slide your grip on. And the reason why I did it backwards from my re, uh, disassembly video is the fact that you can do it either way. You can either take it off before and just simply align it with the groove cut out in the front of the trigger frame and push it on like that or you can take it apart with the trigger frame itself you can do it either way 
just depends on which way you'd rather do it. Uh, and then once you've slid that back on, you just simply, again, re-tighten these. And like I said before, when unloosening them, they aren't very tight, and they don't need to be. They're just there to hold them on, those hold the foregrip on. So you don't even have to really tighten it unless you're getting a little bit of wobble. Then you can tighten it down harder. But basically, till you get them snug, that's all you have to do and your grip frame will be coming off and it, everything should work so and of course afterwards you always want to make sure your gun is working uh, functioning perfect so you turn it on make sure your eyes are working which they are and the solenoid is obviously clicking so everything should be good next thing you want to do is go ahead and take this out um, before you go out and play especially to make sure that's working you don't want to get out there and find your gun isn't uh, check for leaks and stuff, but that's pretty much it guys. So thank you for watching if you didn't check out the D assembly I have that video up on my channel as well So you can either, either be in the side or I'll link you to it in the description uh, But other than that, thank you guys for watching if you haven't already gone and check out some of my other videos I got lots more up especially the invert mini and Some uh, other ones of different guns and such so hopefully again. This has helped please comment rate and subscribe if you haven't uh, commented, you can ask any questions or anything, like I always say in my other videos. But if you have any questions, I'll gladly answer them for you. And hopefully we can get your gun working or whatever you're having problems with. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day.